doing paintings for 20 years of people and their animals. And the ones that I've done in the beginning of the animal's life and at the end, I think the animal has it become more like that person. And the person's actually become more like the animal. So it's a, it's a reciprocal thing that happens. Well, I grew up with animals, specifically Siamese cats, all of them named Sam, and uh, just was drawing them right away. There were always stacks of paper around and pencils, and my father was a, an artist, and my grandmother was an artist, so there was that in the house. I never saw myself painting animals particularly, but it just gradually developed into something that had a lot more meaning to me than, um, than I ever imagined it would. And one of the reasons I stopped doing portraits of people is because I understood that I was basically recording their egos. And so painting animals became m more desirable to me. When I look at the painting, I see Leo. Uh, he just kind of comes alive there. I mean, the fact that it's a cat painting doesn't prevent it from being a, a really very serious work of art. And there are a lot of, you know, animal paintings that are just sen sentimental or, um, or funny or goofy or all of those things. And I think Jackie goes for something else. She really goes for some sense of who the animal is. There is a spirituality that happens between us and, and uh, I think part of Jackie's um, artistry is developed also from her sense of humor and love for animals. She gets to know an animal by, you know, the, the feedback she gets from an animal, I think. And uh, she connects with these creatures. She's brought the dogs, the two that are no longer with us. They look alive when you see the yeah, dogs. When, when you see the paintings, they're still there. You know, all the thoughts, all the memories come back every time I look at those paintings. And when I saw Jackie's work, I was blown away because of how she not only captures the animal physically, but she captures their spirit. She goes to the core of, of the animal and connects there. Meeting the animal is really important because you meet the animal and you get a feel for the animal. There's all kinds of things that we, we perceive on a level that we're not thinking about. It's a physical reaction to another being. She gets down at the animal's level. You see a lot of, of photographs of dogs and cats, and they're, you're looking down at them, you know, and they're sort of misshapen. And she gets, it's as if she's talking to a human being. She gets down on the floor with them and, and tries to get them to engage with her, which they do because she's a very engaging person to begin with. That's what I'm trying to achieve is a, a non-verbal communication that transcends the medium. It's like the I Ching, where you just get a, a, a slice of time, and the slice of time is depicted by this particular creature, whether it's a human or an animal, just a quick snapshot of one essence that happened to be alive at a certain time, in a certain space. In a word, I'd probably say honest. I think that that's the thing that comes through in her work, is that it's very, very honest, very sincere and direct. She seems to catch them somehow between, between being an animal and between being a human. There's a certain look and a certain sense that she manages to capture. It's, it's a, f a fleeting, split-second moment. Why does love have a name? And it's just wonderful when other people see it. Oh, I have one of those for their animal. She does wonder, wonders for the eyes. Eyes are so important. When I was a kid, I always drew just just eyes, and I was always attracted to what I could find there. It's an energetic link that we have between each other. Under this insistent gaze of the animal, you're allowed the freedom and the, the freedom to experience uh, a release of your own constraints. The first time we had the portrait of Bruno up on the mantelpiece, he walked in, looked up, and growled at it. It was that realistic. For me, it was, it's very meaningful. She's so unique. You see so many, you know, people doing art and pictures and portraits or trying to,
paints an animal, and she really nailed it on the head. Animals are very humbling and very instructive in giving us more information about where we where we need to go in our evolution. Mostly doing it and, and understanding animals and feeling animals allow us to shed some of that self-importance. And I think what the animal paintings do is they transcend reason and speak to the heart. When you look into an animal's eyes, you are have you have to ask yourself, as Peter Singer, the uh, philosopher and animal rights activist, said, you can no longer close your eyes to the fact that uh, the being that you're looking at is looking back at you. And how you deal with that is up to you.